Hey guys, welcome back to War Thunder, and welcome to the alternate version of the G55S. This is the normal Tech Tree 4.3 battle reading variant, the G55 Serie 1. And in a lot of ways, it is a superior plane. Well, it gets two added 12.7s uh, in the nose. Um, I think the performance overall is pretty much comparable, uh, but the main difference would be obviously that this plane is free. So if you were to put a talisman on it, you'd be looking at an aircraft that costs less than the premium, and premium does the same job. Which would work if the Italian tech tree was not behind what a lot of people have been referring to as a paywall. Uh, to quickly explain that, the reason why Italian planes are not available for everybody to research immediately is because if it was, tier 1 and 2, and likely even the start of tier 3, would be completely saturated by everybody trying to play Italians. It would crash the matchmaker, and outside of arcade, it simply wouldn't work. So it's not surprising that obviously there's a, a bit of a, a paywall uh, separating the free to players from the ones willing to contribute to the game at the moment with either purchasing the CR32 or the G55S packs. Uh, but if you are a free to player, um, I'm pretty sure that you currently have the achievements you can get very easy to get as well. I think uh, all of them are simply getting wins on a 65% activity, which means that the Italian tech tree will slowly but surely become available for everybody else to research. It's purely there for the sake of probably further bat rating, performance adjustments, and obviously the fact that the matchmaker slowly breathes and accepts a new nation to the matchmaker. So, what has been the second most talked about thing around has been how to kill these planes. I've seen a lot of people have been fighting with them and against them. Um, at this point, I've flown against pretty much all the nations that you possibly can, even a mixed match against some of the Japanese. People don't quite feel comfortable fighting them, and there's, I think, two reasons for it. First of all, the aircraft are new, which means that it will take a couple of weeks for players to get adjusted to what they're actually fighting, but most importantly, players who are fighting against the G55s don't have the G55. And I think over the past couple of years, I've realized very much how important it is to unlock everything, to play nations in a, in a balanced sense, to, you know, grind through tier 4 in every single nation, so that when you fight an aircraft, you already knew how to fight it, because you've flown it, and you know how fighters will usually go against you. It doesn't just work in the sense that if I'm flying the G55, and I get shot down by a Yak, and then I'm flying the Yak, I know how that Yak shot down me. Um, it's also down to the fact that I know what the overall routine is. If you play on the Russian, let's say, Russian 4.3 aircraft, you'll likely know where the climbing paths are. If you're trying to use Russian techniques or if you've got a large cloud cover, you know, you can use that into advantage by knowing where the enemy is less or more likely to be. And so to point out some of the strengths and weaknesses of Italian planes, uh, the, the first overall strength would be just um, the firepower. I don't think there's any Italian plane right now outside of tier 2 and tier 1 that wouldn't have an absolutely incredible firepower. These aircraft remind me almost like a BF-109 with gun pods, and yet they're not optional, they come already pre-installed. The maneuverability seems to be best at around medium speeds. At low speeds, the aircraft starts to really struggle around, especially at low altitudes, and at high speeds, it's going to compress. So, if you've got issues fighting Italian planes, my suggestion would be to alternate your speed because you can easily outdive them and you can also easily outmaneuver them at lower altitudes. What your worst mistake could be is obviously turn fighting them or trying to energy fight them at a, at a medium around about 400 to 550 kilometer per hour range. Another trick worth, um, well, maybe not really exploitable, but um, you can somewhat make it work, is the overheating uh, on the Italian planes. Now, with the use of many engine controls, putting up your radiator flaps to about 50 to 75, even 100%, uh, you can pretty much wep all the time, but for somebody who might not be using many engine controls, you could perhaps be able to push that engine a little bit too far. Um, a pilot who has an overheating engine in a tight dogfight at medium to low altitudes, uh, the slower he's starting to go, the more the engine's going to start to overheat, the more alternate the engine has inputted, you know, wepping and whatnot. So if you can push somebody into that, obviously it's a bit of a blind guess, but potentially you could be able to uh, force the enemy's engine to pretty much fail um, after prolonged use. So really the final tip that I can give you would be, you know, to wait out until the Italian Tech Tree is fully out, to give it a try for yourself. Uh, watch as many videos or as many live streams as you can, people playing Italian planes, because um, if you can see people making mistakes, this is the biggest advantage. Um, observing, right? You know, if you're watching a stream or watching a YouTube video and, and somebody's playing and they make a mistake, they get shut down, look at what happened, look at the moments leading towards the cause of death, and if you can somewhat point out what the mistakes were, you know, you'll know not to make them yourselves, or rather trying to replicate that when you're fighting the enemy aircraft as such. 
So, if you don't have options to get the Italian planes at the moment, I say you're not really missing out on too much. Most of these planes are pretty fun to fly, but they're very repetitive. The G55s are pretty much a copy-pasted um, overall feeling of a flight model, but that is to be expected. It's sort of like going down the VF-109 lineup or the Focal 490 lineup. It's planes with similar characteristics with slight alternations of obviously camouflages, engine performances and guns. And I think this is really one of the, the things that will come and be a huge problem for Italian players in a couple of weeks. The fact that every single fighter that the Italians currently have is a strict version of pretty much itself. There's no variety. In a classic German team, you would have a mixture of BF-49s and Focke 490s, a mixture of energy fighters with defensive fighters. Um, you would have a mixture, for example, of, you know, boom and zoomers, you would have a mixture of turn fighters. There's, every nation has, you know, these, these kind of combinations, like Spitfires and, and Typhoons and Tempests, you know, Zeros and Chi 84s. With the Italian secretary, you only get this. Now, what this is is a fantastic energy fighter. Don't get me wrong. It performs great at... It's, it's a pretty much round-in-the-middle average kind of plane because it performs on average best at, you know, medium altitudes with medium speeds in mind. So what's going to start happening is, and I'm going to start doing this probably the very next week as I start to go through some of the uh, the props on enemy nations. I, I want to take a look at the P-47N. I want to perhaps touch upon the P-51s. Definitely want to revisit some of the Spitfires. And uh, the Russian Yaks do need a bit of an overhaul on my channel as well. And these aircraft, I think, what I want to find is a tactic with which you can always kind of energy trap or at least force the Italians to play at a altitude or speed at which they don't perform quite as good. And so if there's an aircraft you struggle at flying or flying against at bat ratings 4.3 and above, by all means do let me know in the comment section below. Uh, if you have any plane requests, I do ask you, however, if you're portraying an aircraft you have a hard time flying, if you can give me some details on what exactly it is that you struggle with, so I can perhaps implement it in the video with a bit more detail. That's all for this one, hope you enjoyed, and in the background, a quick little snippet of what happened before the video in the G14 I made yesterday, of how the spading and unlocking process overall went.